the year 2000, everybody was signing up for Yahoo email addresses. This was back before Gmail. Yahoo Mail was great, it was free and you could check your email anywhere. But there was this one problem. The problem was that there were people who in order to send spam from Yahoo accounts would obtain millions of emails. Yes, not hundreds or thousands, but millions of fake email accounts. Spammers were writing simple computer programs, little bots that just kept filling out the Yahoo email sign-up form again and again and again, day and night. In turn, that would generate an army of email accounts that could be used for selling fake medicines to stealing your bank account information. Yahoo did not know what to do about this, but Louis Vonan, a computer science student at Carnegie Mellon University, had an idea. So the idea was to make a test that can distinguish between humans and computers, but also a test that is created by the computer. If you've basically ever signed up for anything on the internet, you probably know the idea that Louis Swanan came up with. A picture of distorted letters and numbers, and then a little field below that picture where you type in the characters that you see. They showed it to the chief scientist at Yahoo and they loved it. Louis gave his little test a name. It was a long and ridiculous name that made a short genius acronym. The long name was Completely Automated Public Turing Test to Tell Computers and Humans Apart. Or CAPTCHA. Yes, CAPTCHA. Like gotcha. When people bought tickets online or whenever one made any kind of online subscription, pretty soon people were taking Louis's little test 200 million times a day. It was protecting the world from spammers and bots. And the world, of course, responded with gratitude. Every time that Louis talked to somebody about CAPTCHAs, the first thing they would tell him is how annoying they are. So he started feeling partly responsible for these 200 million times a day. And each time you type one of these, you waste about 10 seconds of your time. He started thinking, is there any way in which he can make a good use of these 10 seconds? This was in the mid-2000s. And at this moment, there was this push going on to digitize old books and old documents. And at that time, it was easy enough to scan old pages, old pieces of paper and put them online. But computers were still bad at turning those scanned pages into a useful online document. It wasn't searchable, you could not change the font size and it was just a bunch of somewhat crappy pictures. So it occurred to Louis that he could take all of the words that the computer could not recognize and he could get people to read them for him while they were typing captchas on the internet. Up to this point, Louis had been giving captchas away for free. But now he thought people might pay to have their print archives digitize one captcha at a time. He was sitting on over half a million hours of free human labor a day. So he started a company called ReCAPTCHA and he went out looking for customers. The New York Times ended up being ReCAPTCHA's first client. Now when one solves the captcha, next to a few random letters and numbers, there was also a picture of a word from an old issue of Times that computers could not read. When someone typed in that word, they weren't just protecting the internet from spam. They were also helping to turn a hundred years of old newspapers into a searchable digital archive. As Louise was getting recapture going, Google came out and announced that they were starting to digitize every book. Like every single book in the world or something. They saw what Louis was doing for the Times. And in 2009, Google bought ReCAPTCHA and started using it to help digitize books. Google started using CAPTCHA tests that showed pictures of addresses on the sides of buildings. When you're solving those CAPTCHAs, you're doing a little work for Google, making Google Maps work better.